Welcome, pirate fans. I am Brian, your host for Pirates of the Wild West podcast. This podcast is in support of my novel, Pirates of the Wild West. Each episode, I talk about the characters that will be featured in the book. Today, we're going to talk about Woods Rogers. Woods Rogers is the main antagonist for the pirates in my book, Pirates of the Wild West. Now, this was also true in real life. Woods Rogers might be the most well-known pirate hunter of all time. The Golden Age pirates feared this man and with good reason. His name was only mentioned in hushed words around the shanties and grog houses and pubs of the Caribbean islands. Woods was born in 1679 and he came from an experienced seafaring family. He grew up in Poole and Bristol and served a marine apprenticeship to a Bristol sea captain. His father held shares in many ships, but died when Rogers was in his mid-twenties, leaving Rogers in control of the family shipping business. Now, he spent the early years of the 1700s running the shipping business as a typical merchant of that time. But in 1708, he took a letter of marquee to become a privateer assigned to harass the Spanish and French in their colonies and disrupt their trade on the seas. These privateering trips would take Woods sailing further than any other man of his time, exploring islands and areas of the Pacific that no European had ever ventured. His years-long voyage would bring him round Cape Horn and into the Western Pacific raiding Spanish and French vessels with his 310-ton frigate named Duke and his second ship, only slightly smaller, called the Duchess. Now, Woods was an excellent commander, though strict with rules and discipline. He had a rule of no gambling on board any vessel of his uh, fleet. And in the beginning of the voyage, there was a mutiny that had to be quickly put down if he was going to have a successful trip. Now, the mutiny was over his decision to leave a neutral com country's ship unharmed instead of uh, attempting to plunder it for its cargo. Many of the men had wanted to start off their trip with a nice bit of booty from this from this ship that was going to be such easy prey, but Woods would have nothing for it. It was only his marquee to attack the French and the Spanish. Now, midway through this voyage, a very, um, very interesting happened to uh, Woods Rogers. They came upon a marooned Scotsman named Alexander Selkirk. Now, they found him when they were um, looking for water and food on this island in the Pacific. Um, this island was part of the chain of the uh, the San, uh, I'm sorry, the Juan Fernandez Islands. And Selkirk had been alone on this island, marooned, for over four years. Now, I don't know if you recognize that name, Alexander Selkirk, but his story is the story that inspired Daniel Defoe's novel, Robinson Crusoe. Rogers noted that Selkirk was clothed in goat skins and that he looked wilder than the first owners of those skins. Woods has written about this rescue in his own book that had detailed the entire voyage upon his return to England. This voyage and its and this book that he wrote made him one of the most famous figures of the time. Now, during this voyage, around the middle of 1709, Rogers attacked the Spanish ports along the Pacific coast, such as Ecuador, where local dignitaries were taken by his own hand and then released once they had paid a ransom for their freedom. French vessels were also attacked, and Rogers added um, this ship called the Marquis to his fleet of two ships after it was raided and captured. Rogers sailed with the three ships into the Galapagos Islands and then to the west coast of America, where a fourth ship was added to the fleet. The expedition's richest capture by far was a Manila galleon, which carried a huge quantity of Chinese silks and other precious goods. 
This ship was taken on New Year's Day, 1710. And this was an astonishing coup since there were only four Manila galleons ever taken as they were so well armed and protected. These galleons were annual Spanish treasure trips, uh, annual Spanish treasure ships that ferried loot between Acapulco in Mexico and Manila in the Philippines. Rogers also tried to capture that day one of the companion treasure ships, the Begonia. And after a few days of trying to capture this ship, following it from behind, firing over 500 cannon shots at this ship, they were still unable to prevent the Bogota, the Bogona's escape. That one, unfortunately, had gotten away. During one of the many battles on this voyage, Woods was shot in the face by a musket ball that lodged there for the remainder of his trip, permanently disfiguring his jaw, but not taking him out of this or any future battles. He and his ships returned to England in 1711 with a record-breaking profit for the investors of this venture, totaling in today's dollars about $45 million. Rogers, unfortunately, went bankrupt before the proceeds could be distributed because the enormous expenses involved in such an expedition, where all the costs were upfronted years in advance of the profit coming back, had depleted by the time it got down to giving out shares to Woods. So Woods had the fame, but not the fortune to go along with it. He took to captaining, cap <laughs> he took to captaining ships that were involved in the slave trade for many years afterwards. His reputation was continued to grow as a leader of men, and eventually he was given a governorship over the Bahamas. While many other Caribbean and New World governors turned a blind eye to piracy, some even profiting from the pirates of this time, this was not the case with Woods. And once piracy had grown to disrupt all trade, including that of England's, Woods was called upon by King George to stamp it out. Rogers was given the title of Captain General and Governor-in-Chief of the New Providence, where the pirates had made their base of operations, specifically the town of Nassau. Now, Woods had the idea for a king's pardon to divide the pirate republic, knowing that a large portion of the pirates would gladly accept a deal of clemency, diminishing their numbers. The pardon granted the pirates an escape from the noose with added benefits of being able to keep all the plunder that they had accumulated, as well as a small plot of land on New Providence to start a new lawful life. When Woods arrived at New Providence in 1718 with seven ships, also accompanied by three Royal Navy ships of the line to deliver the pardon, those three Navy ships were a strong deterrent for many of the pirates that they really were scared to turn down the offer of a pardon. Woods was even able to convince some of the pirate captains to join him in the capture and persecution of their former pirate mates, offering them monetary reward and more land for turning against their brethren. But of course, there were many pirates who rejected the pardon, many who are characters in my book. Pirates like Charles Vane and Bonnie, Black Sam Bellamy, Calico Jack, Mary Reed, and of course, Blackbeard, all of which were in previous podcast episodes. You should go back and listen to those if you miss them. So those pirates decided that they were not going to take the pardon that Woods Rogers had generously offered. And so then started the hunt for these pirates by Wood Rogers. So there's really only one more pirate that I haven't talked about, and we'll save her for the next episode. But I'll give you a little update on the book as it's now finished and I've been querying different agents um, about representation for the book. Um, <laughs> That has been uh, a bit difficult and a bit uh, a bit uh, depressing, to be honest. There's been 
about 123 queries, I think. And so far I've gotten a little over 30 rejections. Two agents um, had asked for the full manuscript and so they have that, um, but I haven't heard back in a couple of weeks from that. So either they are taking their time reading it or they didn't like it and uh, need, maybe it needs some work. So my next step is to find an editor to do some editing on this book, make sure it's in good shape. I've read it several times, made some adjustments and I'm quite happy with it. Um, and then I'd like to do a book cover. So I'm looking at artists to do some cover samples so that I can see if uh, one of them really fits kind of how I see it. I've also been studying the uh, the idea of and how the operations go for self-publishing. So within a few months, maybe February or March, one way or another, this book is going to launch. I'm excited for everybody to learn more about it and uh, I'm excited for people to read it. Um, the next episode will be up in a few weeks, I'm sure. And then that will be the last pirate. And then my thought would be for the last episode of Pirates of the Wild West, I will probably read a couple chapters um, as time permits to see if there's interest on it. If you want to reach out to me, you can email me at darkgravitystudios at gmail.com. On my website, briancantrell.com, you can um, sign up for a newsletter, which I haven't done any yet. So um, I thank you for those that have. And uh, I haven't uh, haven't got a, anything to send a newsletter about yet, but that's coming soon. Once I have uh, a little bit of editing done, and also um, when I have some book cover samples, I will send that out in the newsletter. I thank you very much for listening, and I hope that uh, you enjoy this. I hope that all of the pirate fans out there um, have a good Christmas. If I don't uh, hear from you before then, you could also find me on Facebook. Uh, I'm involved with a lot of pirate groups on Facebook. I'm really enjoying all of them. And um, Christmas is right upon us. And I hope that you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And... I shall be speaking with you soon. Thanks so much for listening. Bye-bye.